in the series of rakshasa dynasty's history we were in the point where we saw how dasgriva captured lanka and pushpak chariot by unfair means from his half brother kubera now we will start the part 3 and we will narrate from that point now let us concentrate on the story how dasgribe become ravan one day while proceeding to the birthplace of kartikeya pushpak rath was stopped by a golden reed in himalaya one of the mountain and the chariot was unable to climb the mountain it was actually the kailash mountain where lord shiva used to stay nandi maharaj nandishar then appeared and he informed rajgri that in this mountain shankar bhagwan was sporting and he should not proceed further and asked him to leave at once dasgriva did not know about shankar bhagwan so he demanded to know who is shankara then he got out of the chariot and he looked up and he saw nandi maharaj standing near lord shiva with a face of monkey and a spear at his hand dasgriva seeing the bull with a monkey face became so amused he laughed loudly with great disdain in response Nandi Maharaj cursed him that in future monkeys will wipe out your race. Nandi said, "I will not kill you; rather, I will allow you to make all sins to get the proper sinful reaction." The scribe did not pay heed to what Nandi Maharaj said, and in reply he said, "Because you stopped my chariot, I will kill your master Sankara himself." After saying this. he put his hand below the mountain and started lifting it ma parvati got disturbed and asked mahadev to punish this creature mahadev just pressed the big mountain with his toe and as a result dasgriva's arms were crushed dasgriva was crying in great pain and realizing his fault he started praying for mercy He worshipped Lord Shiva in that position for thousand years, and he was continuously shouting and screaming. Now, because of his heart scream, heart voice, Shiva gave his name as Ravana, because the word Ra means very bad screaming. Now, Shiva, after thousand years, become very pleased with his austerity, and he gave him a boon. So Ravana became greatest devotee of Lord Shiva. In fact, in Rameshwaram, when Sri Ram did Shiva Aradhana, the puja was done by Ravan, as at that time there was no Brahman priest around. It is said that by far Ravan was the biggest devotee of Lord Shiva, and Sri Ram had to take permission from Lord Shiva and Ma Parvati for killing Ravan. During this time, Ravan also composed Shiv Sandav Stotra, and he made a bina whose photo I will give in the script little later, by which he used to play only bhajans of Lord Shiva with that bina. Getting boons from Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, Ravan became very proud and cruel. He started torturing all and also. his appetite of conquering whatever he could lay eye on he was a very cruel king and was always surrounded by his yes men he had acknowledged the boons given to him and also he practiced shastras and was a very great musician and he had many divine qualities but he used all his knowledge in expanding demonic empire he defeated all demigods and became owner of all lokas and also he was actually a symbol of lust he married some thousand wives and any beautiful looking woman used to be his prey one day ravan when he was going through a jungle he saw a very beautiful girl doing tapasya he she was alone in a forest 
and he mocked at that girl that such a austerity should not be done by a beautiful girl of your age your correct position is actually as a wife of ravan the girl replied i am daughter of brahmarshi kushadhaja and my name is vedavati many qualified kings scholars demigods have already asked my hand for marriage but i told i will marry only lord vishnu lord vishnu is my god and i will marry only lord vishnu hearing this my father promise of marrying me to vishnu the daitya king shambhu killed my father and my mother entered in sacrificial fire and since then i am doing tapasya she also added that by mystic power i have already come to know who are you what is your wish and you should immediately leave this place ravana in turn spoke very ill of lord vishnu and while they were still talking he grabbed vedavati by her hair and tried to pull her in the pushpagrath now vedavati was inflamed with anger and converted her hand as a sword and cut down the hair and freed herself she then lit a very large sacrificial fire by her mystic power and entered into it and cursed ravan that she will take next birth as divine goddess and will be the reason for the death of ravan as she entered fire demigods showered flowers on her and her material body got burnt out then immediately vedavati she again appeared in a new girl's body from a lotus flower very beautiful girl's body ravana quickly caught hold of her and took her to lanka now ravana's ministers and mandadari warned him of bad consequences and then ravan got afraid and he threw that little baby to sea the baby floated across the sea and reached the shore of india and by mother earth as dot took her as daughter and later janak raja got her while plowing the field thus vidavati reincarnated as sita devi and became cause of death of ravan but in kanbu ramayan what we get to see although valmiki ramayan tells we have seen this story but in kanbu ramayan it is told that vidavati reincarnated as chaya sita chaya sita is the sita who was replacement of sita when sita was actually about to be kidnapped it is told that sita being part and parcel of lord ravan had no power to kidnap her so at that time chaya sita emerged from agni dev's fire and she accompanied ravan and after ravan's death when sri ramchandra wanted sita devi to do a fire sacrifice chaya sita entered into fire and the real sita who was actually with agni dev she appeared again now in valmiki ramayan we came to know that once mother parvati actually wanted to deceive ramachandra and this took form of mother sita and wanted to deceive lord now lord actually showed her the real position of her by with the with the jugal roop of ram and sita so that means it is imagined that sita was never with ravan she was with agni dev and ramchandra knew that through his heart but anyhow valmiki raman doesn't say all this thing these are seen in kanbu raman and some of the vishnav filler literature we have got all this thing whatever is the reason vedavati is the reason for which sita or chaya sita the she was the reason for ravan's death in surbanaka episode 
have already explained how Ravan killed Surpanakha's husband by mistake and Surpanakha was very sad. Ravan gave her permission to roam around in Dandakaranna and select anyone whom she liked and he promised to give marriage to that person. But Surpanakha at that time became very sad and she said that one day because of his boasting of power he will be in big trouble. Surpanaka did not know. Probably she actually told what was going to happen in future. Now, I have already told that Ravana was epitome or symptom of lust. One day, when he saw many officers coming from Kubera's palace, Ravana became very much attracted by Rambha and wanted to enjoy her. Rambha said that in relation, she is her daughter-in-law. Ravan said, no, my son Indrajit has not yet got married. Ramba clarified that he is, she was wife of Nal Kuber, who is son of Kuber. But Ravan did not listen to her. He said that if he likes any woman, she cannot say no. And Ravan forcefully enjoyed her. And when this way, devastated Rambha reached Nalkuber's place, Nalkuber became very angry. He went into deep trance and then when he regained his composure, he took water and cursed Ravan that in future, as and when he will forcefully try to enjoy any girl, his hair will split into pieces. This is the reason Ravan never wanted to apply force to Ma Sita. This was told by Ravan himself to his ministers when they asked him to enjoy Ma Sita as they knew that this way Sri Ram would have been devastated. Once Ravana killed a king of Rahu dynasty, his name was Arannana. He was king of Ajodha and in the same line of succession, of Ikhaku. But Ravana killed him in a false way or some kind of wrong way of fight. So he cursed Ravan that someday one of the one of the descendants of my, my dynasty would kill Ravan. And that's the reason Lord Ram was born in that particular dynasty. We also know that Ravana defeated Yamraja in fierce fight and wanted to take away his Kaldanda from him and asked him to use it only as for Ravan's wishes. Yama used his Kaldanda to vanquish Ravan then and there. But Lord Brahma appeared and dissuaded him as Lord Ram had to take birth. Ravana defeated Varundev and his sons and kidnapped virgin daughters of many sages and devotas. If he would find any girl attractive, he would have killed the entire family and bring that girl to Lanka. Thus Ravana's palace was filled up with thousands of beautiful women and they used to cry piteously with grief. This girl became very sad and they cursed Ravan that he would die because of the one of the most beautiful girls on the earth. As soon as the curse was pronounced, demigods again showered flowers on them. Now we will come to the point why Indrajit or Meghnath was so powerful that Agastya Muni told Sri Ramchandra that killing Indrajit was singularly an important event in the whole war. Ravan actually made Indrajit invincible. When Meghnath took birth, Ravan, with his great astrological knowledge, he aligned all the planets in the correct position so that Meghnath automatically becomes immortal. But only one planet did not listen to Ravan. He moved out of his place and that was Shani Dev. 
So Ravan captured Shani Dev, broke his leg and tortured him. And also he captured him and we knew that later on Hanumanji came and freed Shani Dev. However, because all the planets were in the, almost in the same line except Shani Dev, Meghna become invincible. And after he grew up, he started harassing all the demigods and Indra relentlessly. During fight with Indra, Meghnath was fighting with Indra's son Jayanta. They were almost equal in power. But Meghnath used the Rakshasa's illusory power and fought being invisible. Since he may get defeated, Puloma, father of Indra's wife Sachi Devi, pulled Jayant out of battlefield. Then Indra came to fight as the demigods were crying for help. When Indra came to fight, Ravana also came to fight. And Meghnath, using his illusory power, he joined rank of the demigods and appeared before Indra with showers of arrow. Actually, Indra did not imagine that somebody from his camp will shower arrow to him. So, he was not a de deity or he was not a devata. He was actually Meghnath who changed side with his illusory power. And in this way, Indra got defeated. So, Ravan and Meghnath, Meghnath because he captured Indra, captured all the de de demigods and took all of them to Lanka. Now, these demigods, they had certain service to done. Like, the Pavan Dev was supposed to be responsible for the air flow. Now, when all the demigods were taken to Lanka, the whole earth was facing crisis. So, Brahmaji appeared in Lanka and he wanted to do a med meditation. A mediation. And he told Indrajit, now all the demigods have been captured and Indra also has been defeated. So I want to give you a boon. You ask for a boon. So Meghna told he wants to name his own name as Indrajit. So Brahma agreed. Then he wanted another boon by which he should be he should be immortal, which Brahma said that he cannot give. So then he asked, at the time of battle, any kind of battle if I fight, if I offer oblation into the sacrificial fire, let a chariot emerge from the flames. As long as I am seated on the chariot and chanting, the mantra, I will be immune to death and if I complete the chanting of mantra, then I will be completely invincible and even devatas also will not be able to defeat me. Now, Agastya Muni was telling, hence Lakshman had to kill Indrajit before the Nikumbhila Jagga could get completed. Bibishan knew this. And Vibhishan helped him with this secret reason. So that's the reason why killing of Meghnad was extremely important. Now Siram Chandra also said, so that means Ravana was actually defeated by only two people. One is Haihak who was king of Katri Barjuna and he was defeated by Kiskinda king Bali. But, that is true, but defeating and killing Ravan was also extremely important because that is the Ravan was killing so many people and he was actually in the way of making one staircase till Sarga from the earth which would have created more trouble for the entire civilization. So, anyhow, 
This story of Rakshasas is important because once we go through the stories, we will know how powerful these people were and what was the Bhagavan Sri Ram had to do to defeat all of them. So that is why I took a detour from my Ranakando and we told about the history of the Rakshasas. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare.